Okay, so we are now recording. So this is going to be recorded and uh, the video will be posted online um, in the next day or two. So, uh, Welcome to the uh, Galaxy webinar on connecting Galaxy with the NIH Sequence Read Archive, SRA. Um, I'm Dave Clements. I uh, am one of the training and outreach people for the Galaxy Project. Uh, today, we also have Marius Vandenbeek and Dan Blankenberg who are going to join in. In addition, we have a number of people from the SRA itself who are going to chime in as we go, correcting us as we do things or adding additional information. So um, the slides that we're using today, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time in slides, first of all, but the slides do have links in them, so that makes them useful. Um, the slides are at that URL at the bottom, so bit.ly galaxy-sra-slides, and they're Google Slides. So, let's see, oh, there we go. Okay, so our agenda is short and sweet. Uh, we're going to introduce SRA, we're going to introduce Galaxy, and then we're going to talk about SRA and Galaxy, and we're going to do that via a live demo. Um, please ask questions as we go. So there's a, a Q&A window in Zoom. It should be, there should be a Q&A icon at the bottom of your Zoom window. Click on that, type your question. Everyone can see your question. Um, whoever is not speaking will try and uh, collate those and then throw them at the current speaker. So uh, if, you, if your question doesn't get asked immediately, please be patient and it will be asked uh, time allowing. And we want to cover questions as we go. We can also cover questions at the end, but um, we're all big fans of, of questions as we go. So, okay. So when you registered, we asked, is there anything you would like to specifically learn about in this webinar? And we got a whole range of options, um, some of which we're going to cover today and some of which we're not. So we are going to talk about SRA and Galaxy, and we're going to focus on the parts of SRA and Galaxy that have to do with that interaction. So everything in the today column, we should be covering things in the not today covering, sorry, things in the not today column we could cover, uh, but not today, we don't have time. So we can do all these things in SRA or in Galaxy, um, but we're not gonna discuss those today. We will give you some, some pointers on how to get more information about things like that. And lastly, we had one person, God bless you, whoever you are, who said the meaning of life and I do like to think you could find that in SRA and Galaxy, and maybe we will, maybe we won't, but um, we'll try, okay? So that's what we're going to cover. So let's talk about SRA. Um, sequence Read Archive. So the first thing, I'm going to try and do a poll. Poll, can I do a poll here? Um, oh, it's only giving me one poll. I don't want that poll. Crap. Okay, so my first poll has gone gone awry already. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, we're just not going to poll you guys. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. So what I was going to do is ask how many people have experience with SRA and how deep is that experience? Um, I'm going to assume that you have a little bit of experience with SRA. Um, I'm going to do the walkthrough in the SRA part, and Marius is going to do the walkthrough in the Galaxy part. I had another poll, or so I thought, um, to ask about Galaxy and your experience with that. Um, so, but we're just going to plow ahead under the assumption that you have used SRA, but you may or may not be an expert. So, so what is SRA? Um, it's part of NCBI, which is part of NIH, and it's the primary archive of unassembled reads. So it doesn't have final assemblies. It doesn't have reference sequence. What it has is reads, so things that come off the instruments. Um, and that distinction is worth keeping in mind. This is where you go when you want access to the source data for reference read, or, or yeah, yeah, for reference sequence. Okay? Um, things that are in GenBank. This is where you find the evidence behind it. So it's a great place to get, you know, I just said that. Okay. So another point, um, all of SRA, every bit of it is now on Amazon Web Services and Google Compute. So it's all in the cloud. Um, this means you can have fast access to it. Um, it's a very powerful feature and it's relatively recent. Um, 
one note you will also hear referred to as the short read archive its former name it hasn't been the short read archive for a long time but i'm older than that so occasionally i'll call it short read archive and i apologize for that it is not just for short reads it has all kinds of reasoning okay So, and um, SRA folks, again, please feel free to chime in and say, well, I actually do. Um, and we'll see. Oops, wrong window. Okay. So, um, today we're going to spend our time in SRA in two things. One is Entree and one is the SRA Run Selector. Entree is a query interface that's used across a lot of NCBI resources. Um, so, you may already be familiar with it, even if you don't think you are. And the SRA run selector is a newer method of interacting with SRA data. And we're gonna use both. They complement each other. Um, they don't replace each other, but they complement each other. So, okay, and I'm gonna throw this slide at one of the SRA folks. Or maybe I won't. So, uh, I will, my name is Yuri Skripchenko, and I wanted to let everybody know that um, SRA is going through some changes, and um, we would really love to have community feedback on uh, those changes that we're thinking about doing. And so we have this request for information open. Um, so please go to the link on the slide and provide us your feedback on our plans for the changes that we're thinking of doing. Um, I think it's very important to get uh, the community's feedback to make sure that the things we're doing matches your expectations and in the long term will help you perform science faster and better and provide kind of more research opportunities uh, for everybody. Thank you. If you're part of the Galaxy community, that link is also available in the June newsletter and uh, we've tweeted it a couple times on our, on our um, Twitter feed. We've actually retweeted it from NCBI. So you can find that on Twitter as well. Yeah. So let's talk about Galaxy. Um, again, rough introduction before we dive into the actual hands-on part. Um, Galaxy is a data integration and analysis platform. And it's funded for and developed for life scientists. It's actually used in all sorts of things. Um, but that's our goal, is to be for life science. We are, in addition to being that platform, we're a worldwide community. And we really can't stress that enough. The community is what makes Galaxy what it is. Um, and it's not just the coders, the developers. It's the users, people who do training, uh, people who provide infrastructure. <laughs> It's a huge, very vibrant community. And without it, Galaxy would probably not be around anymore. So um, I'd like, yeah. So I'd like to stress both those things. They're equally important, the platform and the people. Okay. Galaxy is available in a whole bunch of different ways. Um, there are over 100 free online web servers out there, something like 140, 30, the last I knew. Um, if you follow that first URL at the bottom, you'll, you'll go to the platform directory. It's also available in commercial and academic clouds, so you can easily launch it on Amazon, or if you're in the US, you can easily launch it on Jetstream. Uh, people have published it in containers, so Docker and virtual machines, so you can launch it on your laptop um, very easily. It's also open source software that can be installed anywhere, and that is the most common use case for Galaxy, because it's installed all over the world. Um, at research institutions, universities, um, usually behind firewalls, but that is our most popular deployment. So, okay. We also have a lot of training materials and we wrote a tutorial um, to highlight how to use SRA and we'll, we'll use that later today. Uh, but there is a huge library. Again, this is part of a community effort. This is entirely run by the community um, to publish tutorials on how to use Galaxy for different domains and all sorts of topics there, epigenetics, genome annotation. We also have tutorials on Galaxy basics like data manipulation, user interface. In addition, we have tutorials on how to write tutorials, uh, which was very useful for the three of us in the last few days. Um, and we also have tutorials on how to run a Galaxy server. So it's a very robust um, library of training materials. 
and uh, something like 160 people have contributed so far to that. Okay. So today we're gonna to do a live demo. Um, we're gonna use a COVID-19 example, um, but that domain doesn't actually matter. What we're demonstrating today is how to use SRA. And it doesn't have to be viral reads you're gathering from SRA, it can be anything. It can back RNA-seq experiments, it can back chip-seq experiments, it can, you, you name it. If it's an SRA, we can get it into Galaxy with what we're gonna show you today. So, and a rough plan, is we're gonna go from Galaxy to SRA to Galaxy to get metadata. And then we're gonna go back to SRA. Well, we're gonna run a tool that goes back to SRA to grab the actual data itself. And then we're gonna run a, a short sweet analysis in Galaxy that uses the SRA data. Now, the second link at the bottom there may or may not work yet. Um, I don't know. It works. it works, yes, okay. I, so reverse that, it works. It's brilliant because we're on the ball, okay? Um, so the second link will take you to that tutorial, and I'm not going to go step through step in that tutorial, but that's basically the process that me and Marius are doing today, is what's in that tutorial. Okay. So um, a couple of caveats before we do this. Um, so SRA is this wonderful resource, chock full of data, and it's growing rapidly, as you may know. But submitters don't often provide complete or correct metadata. And we may see that in some of our exploration today. Um, there's a discrepancy between SRR and ERR entries. Um, does anybody want to expand on what that is? Yes. Uh, so actually, I don't know. Maybe Yuri can correct me. Uh, but something, well, there are several places where uh, primary data is, is, is deposited. So there is a short read archive here at NCBI. There is also short read archive in European um, uh, under EMBL umbrella, a European nucleotide archive. And so they sometimes, especially for COVID, for SARS-CoV-2 data, because it's, it's, it's released essentially on a daily basis, they're not always in sync. So for example, if you're uh, trying to pull ERR, European accessions from SRA from here, sometimes that does not work. So there is some discrepancy here. And also in some cases when you are trying to download really large sets of, um, of, of, of reads, thousands of reads, then some of them may statistically fail for, for a variety of reasons, uh, most, most often for uh, uh, network connectivity uh, reasons. Yeah. So the tool we're going to use today is actually built to deal with that. Um, we won't, I'm pretty sure we won't see that today because we're doing very small data sets and a small number. Um, but the tool is actually built to be rerun and just get the things that fail. So, okay. And I think, yeah. Okay. So let's go back here. I'm going to get out of this escape and let's go to the galaxy training. I go there, what happens? Okay. Let me know if my screen share is no longer behaving. Is it still behaving? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in just a tad. Plus. Let's do one more plus. Okay. So this is the tutorial. Um, it's yeah, so it uses SARS CoV or yeah, it uses COVID as an example, but again, it doesn't actually matter for what we're talking about today. Okay. So I'm going to scroll down. It's a typical tutorial, some leading questions, some objectives, um, what are requirements, all sorts of things. And the aim and the agenda. You'll see as we go through, there's lots of text, there's comments, there's tips. There's also these hands-on. So if you're already familiar with SRA and Galaxy and you know what you're doing, you just want to learn how to do it, you want to focus on just the hands-on parts of these tutorials. Okay. Um, if you're learning either or both of those, it might pay to actually read the tutorial, in which case it'll take you longer, but hopefully it contains some useful insight. Okay, so what we're gonna do again is we're gonna go to usegalaxy.org, um, and from there, we're gonna go to SRA, we're gonna explore SRA for a while, and then we're gonna send data back to Galaxy. So let's do that. And we're gonna start out in Andre. So let's do this. Okay, 
So this is going to land us on usegalaxy.org, uh, which is our, I'm going to zoom in just a tad. Okay. Um, which is the Galaxy server run by the project in the US. So again, anybody can set up their own Galaxy server. There are over 100 public ones. This is the one for the Galaxy that the Galaxy team in the US runs. Okay. And it might be the largest one in the world, I think. Okay. So it's a three panel interface over here. You have your tools in the middle. Um, once we get going, you'll see data sets and tools. So we run our tools from the middle. And we also preview and view our data sets here. Uh, third panel is the history. So this is what we've done. And so far it says, hey, Dave, your, your history is empty. Um, and it says, you can do stuff. So cool, I will do stuff, okay? And in fact, what I'm gonna do is get data from an external source. And so the very first thing I do is I come over here and it's like, okay, what I wanna do, I wanna get data from SRA. So I'm gonna click on that and get data, download and extract. Okay, this stuff looks great because this is what I want to do. But if I click on, well, yeah, eventually I'll click on that. But right now what I want to do is go to the SRA server because I don't yet know the details of what I want. I actually want to go to SRA and figure out exactly what I want. So I'm going to click on that SRA server. And now it transfers me, I'm going to zoom in. Galaxy into SRA. Now, for right now, um, this feature is available on usegalaxy.org. Support for this feature is in the 20.05 release, which has not yet come out, but the release of that is imminent. And once it's in the 2005 release, we'll see it start to filter out to other Galaxy servers as well. Um, but right now, it's only in usegalaxy.org. And so what's happening behind the scenes is when I said, hey, go to the SRA server, it goes from Galaxy to SRA and it tells it which server it came from. And SRA is gonna remember that. And in the end, when I ship stuff back, it remembers what server I came from. Now, again, as of right now, there's only one server, but eventually you'll be able to call this from any server that supports SRA. Okay, so we're in SRA, and this is the Entree interface, which may look familiar if you've used NCBI or SRA before. And you can type anything here. And so I'm gonna borrow something from Yuri because Yuri likes dolphins. And so we're gonna search for dolphin, okay? And it comes back and it gives us 720 results. And we go down and there's a lot of them, and that's cool, okay? So I know, great, it's kind of working. And then I get kind of curious and I go, okay, well, I used to work on a kidney project, so I like to search for dolphin kidneys. And note that it looks different now, okay? There's only one match for dolphin kidney, okay? And it's this one. So it didn't display it as a list, it just took me directly to it. And it might be pretty old because it's 454. Well, that's cool, okay? So I got dolphins, I got dolphin kidneys. If I type kidney, I go back and there we go. Now I've got 124,000 entries. So a lot more than I did for dolphin, okay? Dolphin, oops, if I could spell. So if I go back to doll, uh, dolphin, I have a mechanical keyboard, which is why you can hear me type. I get 720. Okay, now there's a bunch of things we could, so I, yeah, I type dolphin, I type, I type kidney. Um, I could also go into the advanced query form right here. This is a query builder. So if you're familiar with Entree, it has a very sophisticated and powerful syntax for specifying exactly what you want. Um, and you can specify it in very particular fields. So author, I only want to see entries from this, you know, from this author, maybe from this biosample bio project. Uh, maybe I'm only interested in homo sapiens. Uh, I only want to see things that are recent or that are old, who knows. Um, there's a bunch of things you can put in here and you can build this incredibly complex query and then it will put it into Entree syntax, which is difficult to remember, but you can use this form to create it, okay? So we could today use this advanced form to create our query, okay? Now we're not going to. Um, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna search for SARS, so if I can remember this, COV2, okay? 
And that's what we actually want to run today, SARS-CoV-2. And we know we have 25,000 entries, okay? We're on page one of 1,200 pages. So that's kind of a lot of data, okay? And now we could narrow things down here further. We could say, okay, I want to see stuff from Egypt or from Thailand or from wherever. I could do that here. I'm not going to because what I want to do is switch to the run selector interface. Okay. So the run selector complements Entree, as I mentioned earlier, but it's a lot friendlier. Okay. So we're going to switch to that. I'm going to send all 25,000 of these, which is way too many to use in a tutorial, probably way too many to use in any meaningful experiment that we're going to run, but maybe. So I'm going to click on send results to run selector right there. And this is going to take me to a different interface. All 25,000. Okay. Here we are. There's our runs. Oh, so something to note. When we were in S, sorry. So back in Entree, we had a number of entries. And it wasn't this number. It was a different number. And the reason that number is different is because in Entree, we're looking at SRA experiments. Okay? And an experiment is a package that wraps a bunch of things, including runs. Now, we're interested in runs because that's where the sequence data is. So this number is different. It's usually going to be larger because experiments typically have, well, they don't typically have, they can have one or more runs. Okay? And here it's a little bit larger. So don't expect this number to be the same because we've now gone from experiments to runs. It's the same data. We're just seeing it in more detail. Okay, so that's what this is. And it says, hey, we got a lot of stuff here. We got a terab 1.8 terabytes, 3.9 terabases. Uh, something to note is we have this tantalizing galaxy button here, but it's not currently active. So our goal is to make that active and send stuff. Now, in Entree, we could type in searches, which get very sophisticated and narrow in on things. With Run Selector, it provides a faceted search interface, which is over here in the filters list. Okay, so that's what this is. And these items correspond to columns. Now, if we scan this, we have a lot of metadata about all of our 25,000 runs. It goes over and over and over. That's a huge amount of stuff. Okay. And a lot of these columns are reflected here. And they show up in the filters list if, we, if they are suitable for faceted search, which is what we're using. Columns that are suitable for faceted search are two types of columns. One is it has a limited number of discrete values. Okay, So let's see, um, assay type. Let's click on that, for instance. So I just clicked on assay type. And it shows me down here, okay, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different values for assay type. Now, if assay type had 3,000 values, it wouldn't show up in this list because, I, because the run selector can't build a meaningful interface from 3,000 values, okay? But it has a limited number. There's a default you can control with this cog. Okay, it says, well, I want more than 10. I want 15 or 20. I don't think you can say 3,000. Okay. Um, but this allows us to say, I only want to see things that are amplicon. Okay, and you can click on that. And now it's going to narrow this list. We went from 24,960 down to 21,000. Maybe I want to throw an RNA seq as well. And now that number goes up again. And then I decide, oh, actually, I want to drop the amplicon. Okay, and now I'm down to 1,800 items again. Okay, I can also do what? Uh, let's see. I don't know. I don't know what's in cell type. Let's take a look. Okay, so I clicked on cell type, and now I come down here, and I've got tracheal. I've got empty. And maybe I'm particularly interested. Yeah, I'm in particularly interested in lung adenocarcinoma. Hopefully, I pronounced that correctly. So I click on that. And so now I've got the intersection of RNA-seq and lung adenocarcinoma. And I've got 56 items, which are both of those. Okay. Now, before I click that, 
we had a lot of numbers here. These are subsets within this set. So if I unclick that, these numbers, do they change? Oh, they don't change, okay. I take that all back, okay. Um, okay. So you can play with this and you can make your, your um, queries as, as, as sophisticated as you want. Now, this is built as a query interface, but it's also a great interface for understanding the data. So we've got 25,000 rows here. You don't want to spend hours going through assay type columns or paging through this to see what the different options are. You just want to type on assay type and say, what's in here? Okay, so assay type is kind of, you know, it's kind of an easily understood thing, even for me, a non-biologist. But there are also things like, uh, well, I don't, isolation source host assessment probably associated. I don't know what that means, but I come here and I can maybe figure it out. Maybe I have enough background to figure out what this means, isolation source host associated. So there are gonna be columns here where it's not exactly clear what's going on. And you can use the run selector to explore your data. Okay, so it's a much friendlier interface, okay. Now today, since we're running a workshop, we're not gonna do any of that. <laughs> what we're gonna do is get a very small sample, okay? And uh, let's see, do, oh, I skipped ahead right there. Okay, we're gonna do a very small sample. And we're gonna just cut and paste this into the found item search box, okay? Now in reality, this is not what you're gonna do with the run selector. The run selector exists so you can do sophisticated queries. But we're doing a workshop today and yeah, it's just not going to happen. We need these four items. Now, these are pre-selected. Let's see, Marius is going to explain them, um, but, oops, sorry, wrong one. These are pre-selected um, to get us some geographic variation. So, let's see, let's go back here. And I could paste this, you know, the same string into Entree, and I would get the same results. But from Entree, I can't ship things to Galaxy. I have to go to the run selector first. Okay. Oops, where'd it go? I, I, I have to clear on that search. Yes, okay. So now we've got these four. And these four are handpicked again for the, you know, let's see, for the tutorial. So again, you wouldn't do this in reality. Note that Galaxy is still not highlighted. So how are we going to get Galaxy highlighted? In this case, I want all of these, so I'm going to click on that. If I only wanted a few of these, I would click individually, boom, boom, but I want all of them. Okay, uh, no questions yet. Good. Well, that's not good, but no questions. Okay. So note until we do that, that's not highlighted. As soon as I highlight any of these, I can ship it to Galaxy. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, SRA folks, is there anything that should be highlighted before we bounce out of SRA, the run selector? No, I think you're good, but um, you might want to select those four individually. Oop, sorry. Okay. So why is that, Yuri? Oh, I'm just, uh, looks like uh, you have the entire data set selected um, and not just um, the four. So when you look at under the sele uh, selected tab, it looks like it says 24,000 is selected. Wow. Okay. One, two, three, four. Thank you. Ah, okay. See, I didn't know that, Yuri. I could have had a disaster here where we spent where we spent the rest of our lives waiting for twenty four thousand items to go. Thank you, Yuri. Okay. It's just meta data. Um, yeah, that's true. Oh, that's it, true. it wouldn't have been catastrophic. Let's, let's say that. <laughs> that's way. true. Uh, uh, yeah. So Marius's point is, we wouldn't actually send one point eight terabytes. We would actually send let's see metadata for one point eight terabytes. Okay. Thank you, Yuri. For saving our day. Okay. So with that, we're going to head back to Galaxy. So let's click on that. We head back to Galaxy and a couple of things happen. We get that big green box and it goes away. 
Okay, if you're not familiar with Galaxy, that big green box is necessary, but it's not sufficient. And what it means is that we've had a handshake between SRA and Galaxy. And if you get data from UCSC or anywhere else, that's what that big green box means. It means we had a handshake and the handshake went okay. Okay, it does not mean we have your data yet. And so as we can see here, um, we're in Galaxy, we have an unnamed history. It no longer says, Dave, you got nothing. It says, oh, there's this thing called SRA. Now that little icon, that clock icon says, hey, your request is queued. It hasn't started yet. Right now it's transferring the data. So we're actively talking back and forth between Galaxy and SRA and the data is coming over. And now we actually have the data in Galaxy. Um, you right. can, should I take over here? Yes, you should. Thank <laughs> you. Um, you need to unshare your screen. Yeah, details, man. Okay, I'm going to stop <laughs> sharing if I can figure it out. Okay, I have stopped sharing. Marius. And people, please ask questions. We don't have any yet, um, which implies right. that we're perfect. So um, I've done the same thing that Dave just did. Um, I've selected only three data sets, and that's what we have in the current version of the tutorial uh, that we have been changing. Um, so, okay, so this is um, the metadata that we got from the SRA. Uh, you see here a small preview that you can scroll, but of course, if you click on the eye icon, um, the data set will uh, load. And you see here that we, uh, we have this first line, the header, and then we have the most important thing that we're interested in is the run accession. So this is in the first column. And we have all the metadata that we already saw in the run select. So this is now within Galaxy, and we can see um, these data sets come from three different countries, and uh, that is why I have picked them. Um, so this is not yet the entire uh, data set as it is on the SRA. This is just the metadata. Um, so the next step is we need to download the data. And to do that, we will use the uh, download um, sorry. Just to make sure that I'm following the tutorial. Um, so yeah, we have to download and now with this uh, metadata file, we can um, download the actual data set. So um, what we want to use, and again, you can follow the tutorial um, that spells this out a little bit uh, slower. You want to use this tool. So um, this that part, as Dave said, this is the tool uh, panel. So here are all your tools, and they are grouped within sections. But you can also search. Um, so this tool is called Cluster Download. OK. Uh, this one. Okay, and uh, there are multiple options on um, how you can download the data set. So if you already have the accession and you just need to download a single accession, you could type it in like this one here. Um, and I would download a single data set. So, um, that is also useful if you know the accessions because for instance, you're redoing the analysis of the paper. But here, uh, we want to focus on the data set we just selected. Um, so for that, you um, click here on this thing that says select input type, um, and we select list of SRA sessions. And since this is the only data set we have in our history, um, it is automatically selected. But if it was not, uh, you would here, you would be able to click here and choose the data set that you would like. Um, <clears throat> so we can do that. So what happened here, this is the history. Um, in the history, data sets appear as they have been generated. So um, gray means that the data set is well, new and Galaxy hasn't sent them off to the computing uh, facilities, but um, that, that's happening now. And as soon as they are running, they will be orange and then they will turn green. Um, all right, so we set this here. Um, Okay, so we're going to do variant analysis and something can only be varied if we have uh, the corresponding reference. 
So we need to download um, the reference data. Um, <clears throat> so typically you would fetch the reference data from uh, the NCBI resources, so they host the reference genome. Um, but for this tutorial, we've also uploaded the uh, uh, reference sequence to Zenodo, which is an archive for uh, scientific data. Um, so you can get the, uh, um, the URL from the tutorial. Um, okay, so um, we have uh, received this data set through the SRE server itself, but if you want to upload any other data set, this is the main way to upload data into Galaxy. So this opens this here on the model, and there are multiple ways to um, add data sets. You can upload them from your computer, you can upload files by FTP, or if it's simple data or URLs, you can just paste them. So in our case, um, we can paste the record here, we can give it a name. Um, we don't need to name it but faster because Galaxy knows this is a faster file. I'm just going to set this here. And now we can start. And as with the SRA data sets that we're currently downloading here, we're also downloading the reference to So the download has finished. Um, there is a log file, so we found three times two data sets, um, which makes sense because the data sets that we have selected are um, paired and data sets that we generated um, with the Illumina sequencing. So here in library layout, we see that these are paired data sets. And if we look in the um, output of the SRA download tool, we see that these are in here. So I have to say one more thing. This is a normal data set. This is a collection. Um, and so collections are collections of data sets. Uh, grouped together. So we can see here we have these three different obsessions and we can drill down into this connection and we can go deeper and we see that we have a forward and a reverse which is too familiar with in our period sequencing this should make a lot of sense. Um, we can also take a quick look. This is a compressed file but Galaxy knows how to display these compressed files. Um, and if you've ever seen a FASQ file this should be familiar so that you have uh, your sequence, your header lines, and uh, the encoded quality score. Okay, so um, now we have the data sets and we have the reference genome, um, so we can continue with the analysis. Um, one thing that is important to do in this type of analysis and in general is to turn off sequencing adapters. Um, these don't contain biological information, so we want to get rid of them. Um, for this, we can use a tool. We have many different tools, and again, there are tutorials on this. Um, in this case, we will use a tool called FASP. <clears throat> and uh, we have paired and data, so we need to select paired. And we have another collection, so we need to say paired collection. And there is only one paired collection in the history, so it has been pre-selected, but otherwise, if there were multiple data sets here. Um, so, Marius? Yeah? We have a question uh, from Pablo Cataldo. Should we download and process data from single and paired ends separately in Galaxy? Yeah. Uh, so, it, it is not necessary. If this was a mix of single end and paired end data sets, you would get a paired end data set here and a single end data set there. Um, in practical terms, we often separate them so that we can uh, run a series of analysis. We, we can run workflows, which are a series of analysis. Um, and then we first pick the pair data datasets and then the single data datasets because they may need different parameters. But um, in principle, there is, you can download single and pair them. And it doesn't have to be Illumina. Um, it can be anything that the SRA hosts. So Oxford Nanotor, Iron Torrent, um, all data sets. Um, Thanks, Rick. Okay. It's a good question. Thank you. Okay. So um, FASP generates this pair and output, and it generates uh, HTML um, report as well. Now, um, I didn't follow the tutorial, um, but that's not good. Um, 
In fact, what we should have done is run class B connection. Um, and then uh, we would like to output a JSON report because after we're done with the analysis, we will use this. So we, we get an HTML report, which is beautiful. Um, and we get a JSON report, which is machine readable, which we will use later on to generate a bigger report. Um, you need to select the correct uh, input data set as well. You selected the fast P output. <laughs> yeah. Not a problem. <coughs> Galaxy is very patient. Um, it's very good for Johnny's like me. And uh, the real pro trick here is that once you know what you are doing, um, you can generate a workflow to not need to think about this and do what you want to do. All right, so um, the first, sorry, the first uh, run here was completed, um, but we're missing the JSON report, but we can already take a look at this. So, um, so we see that there's a quick overview of what the tournament has done. Um, there's some statistics. So uh, most of the bases are really good. So choose the quality and the more high quality bases you have, the better. Um, and again, there are more extensive tutorials on how to interpret this kind of um, data. All right. Um, so after that return, we can align uh, the sequencing reads back to the genome to see where they align. And uh, this is the basis for the actual alignment. Um, so for the alignment, we will use a tool called EWA Man. Um, <clears throat> And so here we need to select a reference genome. And for most organisms, we already for typical model organisms, we provide indexes of um, genomes that you can use. Um, but in our case, uh, we're using SARS-CoV-2, and maybe you're working with a non-reference genome. Uh, so, um, sorry, non-model organism genome. So you can also select um, to build a custom index, and we're going to do that. Um, so here you will say that we are going to select the reference to from the history. So this is the fast we have. Um, we only have one fast in the history, so this is pre-selected. Um, we have a paired collection, and we want to use FASTP. And here we have multiple data sets that would fit, um, but we want to run the last uh, FASTP run here. And um, that is all we need to do here. There are much more, many more options. Um, so a Galaxy tool typically has all the options that are available on the command line. Um, <clears throat> but we also try to keep it simple. So we have some presets and um, actually BWAM also has these same presets. So uh, that is great. And we can run this tool now. And another thing to point out, I, I skipped ahead here. Um, is that notice that we ran, we downloaded three accessions and we're doing this uh, for each of the three data sets because this is a collection. The jobs run for, um, every tool execution runs for each individual item in the collection. So if you ever think, well, this is too much clicking in Galaxy, uh, put things in the collection and everything will be done for each element within the collection. And it also automatically keeps the name. Um, yeah. So we can see, for instance, here, this is still the accession we have previously, so there's no way that we can mix up the samples. Um, another thing that is great about Galaxy is you don't need to wait until uh, the job is run um, and finished and green to continue. So if I'm fast enough, I can demonstrate this. So the next step um, after alignment is uh, removing duplicate reads. So, um, PCR duplicates or uh, optical duplicates. Uh, for this, we will use um, MAC duplicates from the Picard tool suite. So while that runs, um, there have been several questions in the Q&A that aren't either directly relevant to what Marius was talking about at the time or about something we've talked about earlier. We're answering those questions in Q&A by, um, by a text. So be sure to check that out. Sorry, Marius. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, and again, keep the questions coming. I mean, all questions are good. Um, all right. Um, so one thing I, I also skipped ahead, and again, there is tutorials on this, but uh, you have multiple ways to use data sets. So you can have a single data set, which is like the initial this data set, this data set that is just one single entity. Um, this is how you would run on a single entity. Um, you can run on multiple of these single entities, or you can run on a connection. So whenever um, I'm running these things in parallel, I'm using um, this different function here. Um, and you see it's already pre-selected um, here. Um, and we don't need to wait for, uh, for the data set to finish. We can already hit execute uh, while the tool is already running, but I am too slow um, to actually get there. So Galaxy is faster than I can explain, which is a good thing. Um, so the only setting here that we need to change from the default is we want to remove the duplicates right away. So typically we would keep the duplicates, but have your variant caller take care of um, not overestimating the amount of reads. Um, but here we will say yes and then we can run. All right. Um, after this step, we can uh, generate some basic statistics about the alignment. And um, uh, for this, we're going to use fun tools stats. And uh, note that I am usually not using the sections as, um, as they are here uh, because Galaxy has many, many, many tools. Um, and you can find them by topic, by section. Uh, but if you're following the tutorial, it's much easier to just search for it. Um, OK, so uh, this time it seems that I still have some time to actually run the tool. So we select um, the map duplicate output. Um, OK, is it? Uh, coverage distribution to know, uh, and single summary file. We don't want to filter anything. We don't need reference to points. We don't need to filter by regions. All right, good. <clears throat> um, okay, so the next step is realigning the reads. So often in um, when you have insertions or deletions, uh, there are sometimes equally good options for the aligner to place the read on the reference genome. And um, to have a common set of coordinates, there is a realignment step um, that one can do. And this is especially important when calling uh, either, um, insertions and deletions. Uh, so for this, we will use low read return read. And um, because it's going to do this realignment, we need a reference genome. Um, and as I said, if we don't, didn't prepare a reference genome already, you can always select um, history as the source. This is our reference genome. And um, that is all there is to do. Um, And then we need to do an additional um, uh, step before we can go on to call our variants, which is insert uh, indel qualities. Um, so we do that with um, insert indel qualities with low click. So again, we have as input a data set collection. And maybe I can just show that when you only want to take a single data set out of a collection, you can actually um, go into the collection here and then choose individual data sets. But, um, we want to uniformly process our data sets, so we're not going to do this. Um, <coughs> so these are the options that are appropriate for uh, 
um, is sufficient for qualities. And with that, we can finally do the actual variant problem, which we do with the uh, for variance. So you see that um, Lofric has multiple um, steps, discrete steps in the preparation of um, the input data sets. Um, you can find more information on the COVID-19 portal where we describe in more details why we've chosen to use Lofric um, for calling variants on the SARS-CoV-2 uh, sequencing data. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, so you always need to select your correct input data set here, and it will select the newest appropriate data set. So in our case, um, this is the this file is um, correct. Now we need to set the correct options. So again, we need to provide the reference genome from the history. Um, <clears throat> we're going to call the variance across the entire reference, but there is an option to specify just so a subset of the regions. Um, we're going to call SMBs and uh, insertions deletions. Um, we're going to set some additional uh, options. We're going to say um, that we want as minimum coverage 50, so meaning um, sites that have less than 50 reads will not be covered. Um, and at the base point quality, uh, we're saying that the minimum quality should be 30. Uh, for both reference and alternative places. Um, so this setting is important to make sure that um, you're not calling ambiguous uh, alignments. And um, we're going to say that we want at least 20 for the minimum quality. So again, um, these are settings that uh, need some additional explaining. Uh, but that's outside of the scope of the tutorial for today. Um, <clears throat> all right. So this is the actual variant. Um, the next step after the variant calling. So the variant calling will output a VCF file, which is a standard format uh, for describing um, Variants and you can visualize them in the genome browser. So um, Galaxy has integrations for IGD, uh, for Trackster, Galaxy's built-in genome browser, uh, for JBrowse and others. Um, and it's also very easy to to add them. Um, should these not be sufficient? Okay, so the next step is that we will run SNPFF, which is a tool that um, looks at the variant and predicts what effect the variant actually has. Okay, and there are two SNPF um, variants. So there is a special version just for SARS-CoV-2, which takes care of the multiple overlapping reading frames that are in the SARS-CoV-2 genome. So we're going to use this one. Um, as input, we need to select the uh, VCF file we just generated. Um, it is in VCF format. The genome is already correct. We want to create a VCF again. Um, we also, uh, sorry, is that correct? Let me just check. Yes, VCF is correct. Um, we will also create a CV, uh, which we can later use to generate as um, a summary report. Um, we will not add any upstream or downstream uh, intervals. This is an option that is more appropriate when you are looking at genomic variants um, from non viral sequences. Um, these two options. Um, okay, and the other options. Um, we don't care about these things. I'm not sure. Okay, so SNPF uh, F describes the effect that the given mutation has. Um, and we can uh, 
We can we can open a VCF file now just to give you an idea how this works there in case you've not seen this before. Uh, so you had your chromosome or your bond tape. Um, you have a position. Um, you have some optional things, so you can give variance and ID, but we're not doing this. And then you have the reference base, and you have the alternate alternate base. You have a um, quality column. You can apply filters in case you did apply some filters. Um, you will have here either pass or fail. Um, this is an optional column, so you may also have just have a dot, which denotes um, optional columns. And then you have uh, various information. So DP stands for depth. AF is a new frequency. So what fraction of alternate um, bases are supported by reads compared to the total reads? Um, and then you have the type of uh, variant and submission information. But um, this doesn't really tell you yet what is the effect that it has. Is it an amino acid change? Is it a synonymous variant? Does it maybe introduce stops? Um, so for this, we used SNP of F. So you can see that here. Um, <clears throat> it does add this information within this info column here. But again, that is not super uh, easy to read. So now we can use uh, SNP SIP, which um, generates a table from this VCF, just with the information that we need. So we can select the um, set here. There are some additional uh, things that are interesting that we want to extract. So these are given in the tutorial. So this is the last step that generates data. And now we're um, going to summarize what we've generated so far using MultiQC. It's a very great tool um, for generating this kind of reports. Um, <clears throat> so we have results from FASTP, which was, well, Um, okay, so even um, copy pasting is not always fruitful and wonderful. Um, but another thing, you know, when things go wrong, you want to understand what is going on. So this is very nice. I can actually show you that um, if I don't know what is going on here, I could hit this button here to submit a bug report, and somebody from our team. Um, will respond and let you know what went wrong. So you could say, hello, um, I tried to find this analysis, but I don't know what I did wrong. So we receive this report, we look at this, uh, we try to help you um, however we can. Um, it also already says here uh, that there was an exception. So um, you see here, input get H wrong, not found in the header, so this should have been Chrome. Um, so we actually don't need the help. And in fact, we can use the rerun button. This is a very cool feature in Galaxy. So that just goes all parameters in the database for reproducibility reasons. Um, so if something goes wrong or you want to change a parameter and just the same parameter, you can hit this rerun button. Um, and so all we need to do here is change H1 to clone, chromosome, and then um, we can run again. And to keep things clear, we can do that all the time. All right, so back to the multi QC. Um, so we have a fast P uh, report, um, and there is only one data set that. Is compatible, so it's very easy to select this. Um, 
We also have a samples report and sample stats. Um, so this is this data set here. Um, and we have a snippet report, which is this data set here. Okay, so I'll uh, move the QC is running. We can have a look at the tables. So um, this is considerably more friendly than the uh, DCF. So this is your regular table that you could download and open in a, in a spreadsheet editor, or you can have it here. Um, <clears throat> so um, see here which um, data set this is. And I'm always opening just the first one, but you can see that there is a varying number of um, um, number of lines in the data set. Um, and this corresponds to the number of uh, variants that we found. And um, we see here the impact. So um, uh, we have, for instance, here some low impact uh, mutations of variants where the mutation is signed, and we have a single use coding mutation. Um, or we have some things that are more severe, but typically the more severe things have a lower wave frequencies within the sample, they were quite rare. Um, okay, so let's see. <clears throat> okay. So the multi-QC report is done. So it gives us a global overview of what we've done and we can make it display here and we can have the tool panel here to a bit more space. Um, and so these are some general statistics. Um, you can see uh, various things here. So um, for instance, um, one data set had a high level of uh, duplication. So perhaps it was uh, sequenced very deep. Um, we can also see that the not percent of mapped reads is relatively low. So this might indicate that maybe there's still some human reads that are within this mixture. Um, there's few proper pairs, which again might highlight that um, uh, human reads have been artificially removed. Um, and uh, we can see where um, mutations fall. We can see the impact that mutations have. Um, we can see um, whether we have frame shift months in the news. Um, so, but keep in mind, this is an unfiltered list and typically you would do some additional filtering. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> We can see how many uh, reads we have. So this is the largest data set. This is the smallest data set. Um, yeah. Okay. So are there any additional questions to answer? If not, then I think we can go back to the slides. Thank you, Marius. There were a lot of questions while you were talking. Uh, so most of them have been answered in the Q&A. We currently have one open question from Pablo. In the trimming step, does Galaxy identify automatically all sorts of adapter sequences that may be present, or should we specify them? Um, if you know them, it's always better to specify them explicitly. Uh, if you don't know them, it does recognize the most common sequencing adapters. But if their prevalence is relatively low, it may not find them. Um, so that is. I just want to add here that Galaxy doesn't identify anything. What it identifies is the tools that it has. So in this particular case, we're using FastP. Uh, which recognizes automatically some types of Illumina adapters and trims them. There's also Trimomatic, which is in Galaxy, which we didn't use in this example. There is Trim Galore. In, particularly in case of SARS-CoV-2, if you're using Ampliconic data, so these data sets have specific primers that are used for amplifying in this, in reaching particularly SARS-CoV-2 sequences. And so you have to know them. 
and there are tools for dealing with them specifically. There is an IVAR uh, tool set for <laughs> cleaving off um, um, amplicon primers off of these reads. It's also in Galaxy. We're not showing it as a part of this example, but it's there. <laughs> but in order to use it, you need to know uh, adapter sequences that you're using. Thanks, Anton. Uh, another question from Tushrika. Uh, it is it possible to form plots in Galaxy which show us which are the common genes present in each sample? Anybody um, want to take that? Um, in in relation to SARS-CoV-2 or in general? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I, I doubt any of us understands exactly what do, do you mean in, by genes here. So in general? In general. Okay, so um, I mean, this, this is a bit difficult to answer uh, that from the perspective. So if you want to see, for instance, which genes have a mutation, you could generate a tabular file, and then there are tools in Galaxy to plot uh, tabular data. Um, there are visualizations where you can um, display one axis versus the other. Um, these are relatively simple tools. Um, if you do know how to use Earth Studio or Jupyter, uh, you can load up the data that you generated and then use Earth Studio or Jupyter within Galaxy to get at that question. And we have also, we have a tech, we have a wrapper of uh, ggplot, um, which also lets you uh, display different columns, different colors. Um, so we don't have necessarily something specifically for genes, but as soon as you put that into a table, you can um, generate plots. Thank you, Marius. So we have one more outstanding question, but in the interest of time, I'm gonna move on. Um, let's see, Tusharika, uh, I'm gonna show some resources on the last slide that uh, you can follow up with, or if any of the panelists wanna answer that via text, um, feel free. Okay. So thank you, Marius. That was wonderful. Let's go back and I'll see if I can share my screen. Share. Wow, I feel like I'm in the 20th century, 21st century, sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So these are the resources I was referring to. Uh, we have a bunch from SRA and a bunch from Galaxy. Again, these slides are available online. Um, and we'll also post links to these slides, uh, probably, well, I don't know about SRA, but we certainly will from Galaxy. So if you have questions about SRA, that's the email at SRA. Um, lots and lots of resources at SRA and NCBI in general, really a ton of stuff. There are some links to this in the tutorial itself. Um, there also is guidance about how to submit data, which is a very common question. Um, for Galaxy, there's a number of resources. Galaxyproject.org is the community hub. It's the website about all things Galaxy. And in theory, it links out to all parts of the Galaxy ecosystem. A couple of places to ask questions, get help. Help.galaxyproject.org is a um, discourse-based online forum, Q&A forum. It's quite popular, quite friendly. The community is also quite friendly. If you prefer a chat interface, we use Gitter for that, and that's what the Gitter link takes you to. Um, you can ask questions there. That works well for a lot of give and take and uh, questions that you can state in a short way. If it takes a long time to describe your, your question, then um, help might be more useful. Um, I mentioned earlier, there are over 100, use ga 100 Galaxy instances that are publicly accessible. Um, here are three of them, which are the big ones, usegalaxy.org, run by the US team, usegalaxy.eu, run by the European team, and usegalaxy.org.ae, run by the Australian team. There are also more of these in the works. There's a Use Galaxy Belgium, for instance, that's out there. Um, France, Spain, Southeast Asia, um, and Taiwan are all in various steps of, of coming along. The last thing I wanna highlight is our annual conference, which is at that URL. We are co-locating with BOSC this year, the Bioinformatics Open Source Conference. Um, it's really, well, it's online, obviously. It's at the end of July, and it's really, really affordable. 
And no matter where you are in the world, you can attend because we are mirroring our content in both hemispheres. So we're hosting um, out of Toronto and we're hosting out of um, Eastern Australia as well. So 12 hours apart, everything twice each day. Okay. So the last slide, thank you. Um, we'd really like to thank our NCBI collaborators, um, Yuri, who's on the call, as is Lydia and Ravinder. I don't know if Kurt and Sergey, sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, are on the call or not, but they were both instrumental in getting this to work. Um, we'd like to thank NIAID, NHGRI, and NSF because they provide us with funding. And last, but certainly not least, the Galaxy community. And again, without them, we would not be who we are. And Dave, if I might just finish. So this, um, again, we're very grateful to SRA for initiating this. And uh, SRA provides, I lost my Zoom interface here, yes. So SRA provides open data. And what we're adding here, we're adding open tools and open infrastructure to analyze this data. Because if you, if any of you on this webinar will decide to download 10,000 SRA data sets, you will be able to do that. And you will be able to map them and to analyze them. And so this will, this will be happening somewhere. And this is one of the reasons why we have NSF there because NSF funds um, national uh, supercomputing infrastructure and Galaxy runs out of Texas Advanced Computing Center, which allows any one of you to analyze very large data. So, but, so I want to thank them. And again, I want to thank SRA for initiating this. This is, it's, it's, an, it's at early stages. We're probably gonna have some problems. And so for you users, it's important to uh, let us know what these problems are so we can fix them. Thank you. Thank you, Anton. And thank you all, last, um, certainly not least again, for sticking with us for the whole 75 minutes of this call. And um, we look forward to hearing from you on those uh, contact and support channels. Okay, and that's it. Uh, I'm gonna stop the recording.